welcome to Body Bags, presented by the Kokomo Lantern. My name is Jeremy Geiger, and I am a co-owner of City of First Cremation and Funeral Service. Today, I want to kind of dive more in on the topic of restorative art. How are we able to do some of the things that you see in your loved one? How were we able to take so many years off of them? How were we able to make them look much healthier? How are you able to fix some mistakes? Um, so you kind of see what I've got set out in front of you. I've mentioned it in an episode early on about a mistake of a gentleman shaving off a mustache. And I had to repair that and put it back. Well, doggone it. I did it again. I had to recreate a mustache, not once but twice for this gentleman. Uh, thought I had clear direction from the family. Did not get clear direction from the family. So I shaved off a mustache and then I find out three days later that it was supposed to have stayed. Whoops. Uh, I felt very confident with the, the mustache uh, the replacement. I was questioned if I had like a stick on mustache. I did not, so I brought some of the things up uh, to show you what I utilized. Uh, and then I'll kind of talk about some other things that we can do for restorative art. So the biggest thing you need to do is you need to find some natural hair. That is as close as you can get color wise to the beard or mustache you're trying to replace. Uh, this was as, as close as I could get. The gentleman had a very white beard, so this silver was as close as I got. I took and cut on the ends of the hair to the approximate length of the mustache I was trying to create. With all restorative art processes, you need good firm tissue to go ahead and work with. So I made sure the embalming was done well and that my solution was a little stronger than normal because I wanted the tissue to be really, really firm. Then I took modeling wax. Modeling wax, it comes in a variety of um, flexibilities or um, textures. Uh, the one I like is more of a firm wax. I heated it up in the microwave for a couple of minutes to get it more pliable. Uh, it is pretty pliable. I used a restorative art wax spatula and I took some of the, the wax out and as you can see it, it's, it's not quite like um, candle wax. It's not quite like a Vaseline. It's a little thicker than a Vaseline. Um, it's very, very tacky, but with more heat, the uh, softer it gets. I laid a very thin layer of this on the upper lip, and then I started placing the actual hair strands into that wax area. I got it all laid in there. Uh, I mentioned my color wasn't quite right. Back to smoke and mirrors with the funeral side of what we do. I took white talcum powder. Notice I didn't say baby powder because it would smell like baby, baby powder. I want something that's got no odor to it but is very stark white. I used an atomizer which blows out that powder real fine onto the hair and it lightened it up. I took a Q-tip and kind of dabbed along that mustache area because it did have kind of specks on it um, where you could kind of see the cosmetics. Took pictures, sent it to the people uh, within question, and my response was, holy cow, that's amazing. I never would have thought it would have been that great. The family's over the top happy, but they did notice one thing. What, what might that be? The picture they sent me, I couldn't really tell. The deceased was far away. He was smiling. 
He had a thin pencil line mustache. Great, even better. So I tried to take my spatula and cut in on the wax and the hair and pull it from the upper lip to the nose. Uh, it didn't work for me. It ended up literally peeling that wax off as a whole and it looked like a stick on mustache like I referenced. Um, so I had to start all over again. Uh, this process, it took me oh, maybe two hours the first time. Uh, the second time since I was a pencil mustache, it took me maybe an hour, hour and a half. Wasn't near as challenging. Um, it was just a little more unique to try to blend a pencil mustache in to the skin without it looking like it was fake. The folks ended up with an open casket, public visitation, nobody knew the wiser. Not happy that it happened, but it's something that is correctable. So that's kind of a little neat thing with restorative art. I brought the modeling wax up and some ligature up to kind of talk about more things that I see with the restorative art side more or less talking about the face. And some of these things may apply to the hand. Um, occasionally we will deal with a deceased that has been through a very um, traumatic car accident or motorcycle accident um, where there's deep lacerations that need to be filled. Sometimes you're able to bring that skin together where you can sew it and it looks like maybe just a small cut where you can go back with your wax, apply over that, and um, cosmetize over that wax. You'll use your brush to kind of stipple it to give it pores. Um, sometimes there's a portion of that tissue that's actually gone. It, it may have just gotten cut off. It may, who knows what has happened to it, honestly. And sometimes I have to create bridge stitches. So you are basically just closing that incision without it puckering. I would use a waxed ligature. Um, it's, it's a rather thick ligature to pull that together. And then I may come back through and kind of basket weave between them to kind of build up some texture so that way my wax, when I apply it to that deep laceration, that it's kind of got something to bond to. Think of it, mm, I'll give you kind of two ideas to think of this. Uh, one, I'm thinking of drywall when we put the mudding tape up over the seam and then we're applying the mud or the compound over that tape. Same kind of thing, except my tape's gonna be ligature to kind of give it support, my mud is wax. The other correlation that I think to that, um, I just had a brain fart. So we hate the mudding. Hmm. It slipped me, I don't know. Sometimes on these lacerations that I talk about where I can maybe butt them together, I'm going to use something that may surprise some of you. I use dental floss. The dental floss is very fine. It can be transparent on that incision. What I, I would do is maybe a worm in suture where I would go underneath the top layer of skin and I'm going through the dermis and I'm literally worming my way through both sides and then pulling that string tight and it will bring that skin together really close. Um, I may even throw a little bit of super glue in there to help seal that. We always want firm, dry tissue. Um, if that laceration's deep, I may put a chemical on there to kind of cauterize it and dry it out. So that way when I do apply the glue in the wax that it doesn't roll around or slide off, it really helps bond that better to the skin. Other things that we may use 
that wouldn't be on the wax or restoration side would be something called tissue builder. Tissue builder really comes into play on individuals that um, are very, very emaciated or they've been sick for a long period of time where they're the temples on the sides of their head are severely sunken. The cheekbones are very exposed. We go in with this liquid. It, once it interacts with water, it turns into like a gel. Um, some of it is firming, others are not. It just depends on the area you're trying to treat. Um, a lot of times we won't use a firming because the, the tissue's already firmed, we're just needing to kind of build that volume up and give it a more full appearance. Some of the, the swelling could also take place during the embalming where we could restrict the drainage to create some severe swelling, maybe severe at the beginning, but as the embalming's completed and that pressure's brought down, um, it fills out those sunken areas. I also like to take that tissue builder because a lot of people forget the hands. The hands are a real big telltale sign of your age, believe it or not. Um, they're exposed to more harsh environmental um, attributes, whether it's the sun or the chemicals that we use to clean our house, wash our hands, just various things that we expose our hands to versus our face. You know, we're not sticking our face in different chemicals, laundry soap or hand soap for that matter. So the tissue building um, creates that more full appearance of a deceased. Um, that, that can be helpful to a family when they've definitely experienced um, a long period of sickness where they've watched them decline. They may even have that thought of, well, it needs to be a closed casket because they just don't even look the same. Um, when you're dealing with a funeral home at these times and their concerns of yours, ask them about, are there ways to maybe counteract some of that? Um, and as we're addressing like the head and the face and the hands to be um, tissue built, lacerations, taken care of. Sometimes it's not even a laceration. And, and some of our older folks that are on blood thinners, it may be just really thin skin that maybe slips off and then we can see some of the muscle and tendon structure. So we're, we're drying that tissue and getting it adhered back to the hand or the elbow. Just kind of depends there. Um, but we're also looking at their chest, you know, if they've lost a lot of weight and they're emaciated, their suit that you probably picked out, it's not going to fit them. So we're going to try to pull some of the clothing back a little bit tighter. Um, we're going to add some padding to their chest. So that way, when you come up and you put your hand on their shoulder in their casket or on their chest, when you're, you're paying your final respects, that you're not feeling all those bumps and bones and lumps. Um, we're trying to make it a more soft feel for us survivors. You know, a lot of our ritual, in my opinions, for funeral services have nothing to do for the deceased. It's all about us survivors and helping us cope with the grief and the loss that we're going through. So that kind of touches on some restorative art, some of my new redoing mustaches again. Boy, do I not want to have to do that. It's not fun. Um, but it's a skill that I'm glad that I have. Um, the funeral home that I, I help, um, I think I gained a lot of their confidence on my restorative art skills. So as they continue to serve uh, their families when they encounter a difficult case that needs a lot of attention and work, they know they can count on me. They've seen some of my work and the ability to perform for them. So I kind of want to leave this uh, with another story at the end of my segment. Um, this one's pretty exciting. I know I've had some, some challenging ones that I've shared with you, but uh, this is kind of a two-part announcement. One is we are getting a new therapy dog here at City of First Cremation. 
Her name is Luca. Uh, she is an eight week old Great Dane. Uh, and how we come up with Luca was uh, a close friend of mine who worked for me up in Elkhart had some puppies and been kind of watching it. And uh, since my time with Bogey is pretty restricted right now, um, I'm having some difficulties not having my little buddy and companion and having, having my dog um, here to support our families. I just felt that it was time that we, we got uh, another therapy dog to be here in the funeral home more often than what Bogey is able to. But uh, this gentleman's name, his name's Sean. Uh, and when I went up last week to uh, be introduced to Luca, we got to talking about some things. And it just makes me wanna share with you maybe an aspect that you don't realize that, that we get to, to be a part of. So, when I worked in Elkhart, um, it wasn't uncommon for Sean and I, after removal and embalming, to slide up to one of the local uh, watering holes and have a, a, a cold beverage. We'd usually get a beer or two and then head home for the night. Um, it was always interesting because we never frequent the same bar. That seemed too easy. Everybody knew who we were. Um, and that would lead into questions like, oh, you had another death call, that's why you're in here. So we would tend to bounce around to different locations to maybe avoid those questions. Uh, it didn't work out so well. Who do you know that shows up in a bar at 2.30 in the morning that looks like they just come out of Sunday church? They're in a full-blown suit and tie. Well, it was us funeral home workers, it, 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 was, it was always interesting because we would get the, the side eye of weird outfit and then small talk with the bartender or server and then the next thing you know, we've let the cat out of the bag and we're getting questions of, no way, you guys just got done embalming? What is that like? Who did you get? How old were they? Was it a tough embalming? Have you ever seen I mean, it was all the same questions we're used to hearing and being asked, and we were always very respectful, and we never gave any names, and just tried to keep it very simple with those that were asking. Um, sometimes those uh, servers or bartenders that we were a little more close with, um, when they would see us come in, they'd kind of nudge, hey, come over here. And, it was them that really had the questions and they didn't want us to be bothered by everybody else to be able to ask us questions. But um, yeah, Sean and I, we would, we would go and have a beer too and, and nothing crazy ever because we were still on call. Um, we still needed to be able to perform our job. Um, sometimes we were just so exhausted it wasn't even worth going to have a beverage. We would just go down to the basement and have a pop. We drink a Dr. Pepper and just kind of decompress and talk about maybe our interactions with the security or maybe the coroner's office. Um, in Elkhart County, we funeral home employees had to take rotation on removals. Uh, talking with Sean last week, he asked, um, you know, if we still do some of that. And here in Kokomo, we don't have to be too concerned on transportation needs with the coroner's office. And he indicated, boy, he misses some of those days being called out in the middle of the night. Um, and, and even just sitting and, and having a cold beer and just talking about what we, we had to overcome, whether it was a difficult embalming or a very difficult removal. Um, sometimes we were in some bad neighborhoods or bad areas to get a body out, like being upstairs in a bathtub or upstairs on the floor on a spiral staircase. You never know what it was. It was always interesting to see what we got into. Um, so it was neat to share with Sean that it's not like that for us here in Kokomo right now. And uh, it sounds like Sean will be coming to see us in the next upcoming months as he checks on Luca 
and we'll see if we can get Sean to come back to funeral service. He did go to school. Uh, he took part of his national board and he just got fizzled out and burnt out with what the job requires sometimes and he went back to some of the industry he did in the past. So nothing crazy but just some exciting news for us here at the funeral home and wanted to share that with you. But this does conclude our services here at the funeral home. As always, please like, follow and subscribe. Take care.